Hey, let's bring in our first guest to the show, Senator Shelley Moore Capito. Senator Capito, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. I'm great. I'm, I'm a little worried about Jason and the headphones, but I think he'll figure it out. He's a young guy. I'm not sure. If he, a, I'm, a, I'm not sure if he's that young anymore. And a, I'm not, B, I'm not sure he'll figure it and out. And he's not making any progress in no, figuring out. <laughs> Senator, I did just turn 42, but, but I will tell you that um, I may not be able to hear these two, but I can hear you, and that's all that matters this morning. Well, that's all that matters. That's correct. <laughs> Senator, let's uh, let's begin first with uh, it's first. It's been a busy two weeks, and I'd like to begin oh, if we could, to say the least. Uh, the, the 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 GOP convention and the uh, select selection of uh, Vance as the vice president, uh, which uh, quickly uh, lost its headline luster when there was an assassination attempt on uh, President Trump uh, near Pittsburgh in the northern suburb of uh, Butler. Uh, that uh, that was a quite the week that went by there. Can you comment on that? Well, I mean, it was uh, uh, as much news packed into two weeks as normally packed into an entire year. Because then, if you kind of go back to that, the conversation pr uh, previous to that was the debate and President Biden's performance, and then it just morphed into all of these other things. Uh, you know, I think, and then of course with Biden stepping down and. And the vice president becoming the nominee, that's a whole uh, dominating the news cycle now. And then who is she going to choose? So it's been a whirlwind of change and something unprecedented, um, honestly. Um, I'm very happy that President Trump is OK. And But then you see all the news coming out on that about how the, the inadequacy of the protection. And, I mean, I, we've seen Secret Service protection in the panhandle. We had – President Bush there, uh, I, I believe we were in Hedgesville, and uh, I mean, they don't leave anything uncovered here. And I don't know what where the lapses were, but they're they're gaping and they're, it's scary. That's scary. So uh, we got lots to consider, I think, as we move through towards the towards the election in November. I know there was an issue with coordination between which federal, state and local police were in charge of securing what. But ultimately, doesn't it fall upon the Secret Service to coordinate all that and to make sure that the absolutely. highest ground in the area is accounted for? Uh, absolutely. And, and you know, what you hear is, well, they gave it to the locals, their sniper teams. Uh, well, they got too hot. They went down. I mean, you can't even I, – I, when you look at the schematics of it, honestly, I, I'm like, how could they have a building that close to, to where they were rallying. And, and so there's all kinds of questions. And yes, you see the Secret Service director resigned as she should have. I mean, the buck stops with her. Her testimony was miserable. And uh, Director Ray kind of shed a little bit more light on what's going on. But then you're seeing these whistleblower videos from local police where they're, they're saying, oh yeah, we had his picture on our phone 15 minutes before this happened. It's just, uh, it's a little Keystone Cops, and I didn't think we were – I thought we had it all buttoned up in terms of perimeter assurances of safety and all those things. So uh, I'm sure there's a lot of angst in, this, in the Secret Service right now because, generally speaking, they're incredible people that do great work. Bill? Yeah, good morning, Senator. Uh, you're right. Good morning. There, there's a lot of stuff that's happened the last couple of so weeks. Uh and we had an event yesterday, and that was the Prime Minister of Israel uh, spoke. But accompanying the speech was uh, uh, with a protest, the uh, Palestinian protest. And I heard you made a news clip on that as well. That I found to be quite disturbing. Your comments? Oh, very disturbing. I, I, you know, I was there for uh, the Prime Minister's speech, and you know, he was a, it was an aggressive speech, and and he's an aggressive individual. And Israel needs to be aggressive to get rid of uh, Hamas in a neighboring country. So, you know, these are not easy topics. But then uh, later on that day, I could hear because my office uh, looks out towards Union Station. That's where that the, they had the protesters. They were defacing the monuments there, uh, putting things like Hamas is on its way. And then they take our flag down and burn it. Now, to me, that is the ultimate offense, and certainly, Bill, for you, having served our country for so long, have to be doubly offended if that's, you know, if that's even correct. And and I think, you know, there's, I agree with President Trump. These folks need to be punished for this. This is a very offensive to every American. And if you don't like our, if you hate our country that much, please leave. Please leave. We, you know, we're 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 a good and free country, and a t have a high level of tolerance of 
of uh, protesters and other voices, but that was very, very uh, offensive, I think, to every American. Let me ask a question. I'm piggybacking on that bill and, and Senator Capito. Mm -hmm. the, the Supreme Court uh, decided the flag burning issue some years ago. We don't have to like it or agree with it, but that's the decision. But at the time when people start defacing public property and the words Hamas uh, being painted onto public statues, at that point, can't the police move in and break up the assembly? Once you begin breaking the law, it's no longer a, a peaceful legal assembly, correct? No, it wasn't. And, and the pictures that I saw, well, first of all, they had the park police there. The place was really laden with uh, NYPD. They had two or 400 officers came down from New York City that's used to controlling big crowds. You know, they have U.N. conferences in, in New York City, and New York City has all kinds of protests all the time. So these are well-trained uh, law enforcement, and uh, I think they're, you know, they're taught to sort of stand back. But when you see something like, and I think you could see them trying to intervene with the flag burning and even some individuals trying to intervene, and it, it, it you know, it didn't spiral out of control, which is good, so nobody was hurt, but it just um, – and then what, what really gets me is when you see these people being interviewed on TV and they're all covered up. You know, you, you will never know who they are. They've got their faces covered. All you can see are their eyes. And I'm like, you're cowards. You know, if you're going to come and protest and burn our flag and you're supposed to be drawing attention to yourself, but you don't want us to see who you are because you're going to lose your scholarship at some school somewhere. I mean, to me, that just shows you who they are. Yeah, and I you made a comment a second ago, Senator, and I agree with it a hundred percent that it's a uh I find it personally offensive if you if the flag is dishonored in any way whatsoever. But that carries us back to uh, uh the point that Rob mentioned earlier and this free uh the First Amendment. It's a it's a fine line and I'm not sure anybody really has an understanding. I'm I'm trying to defend the police here. Uh what is where you cross this line, I wish there was a more distinct, I wish there was a clearer line of what was or was not uh, allowable. I think you, you cross it when you begin defacing public property. That's not freedom of speech. Right. That's I'm, criminal. I'm not sure it is. Uh, I think there's if someone's is injury is done, but just defacing a public property, that's done all the time, Rob. It's still illegal. It's it's still it's still not legal, Bill. Of course, it's illegal. You don't, you're not. It's not your right to go out and paint things on the on on the Lincoln Memorial because I have a right to express myself. Here's a can of paint. I'm going to do it. You can't stop me. Yeah, sure, I can. You may you may well be right. I just wish there was a clearer uh, line of demarcation. I'm, you, I'm you getting may fired be right. up. It it's going to be a rob rant if you're not careful, Bill. <laughs> well, I I agree, and there's been a point made also that the flag that was flying over the uh, at Union Station is a federal property as well. That's not a somebody's personal flag. That's the that's the property of the United States government. So that's defacing federal property, uh, you know, at its worst. But I think also something I didn't mention that I think Netanyahu certainly emphasized to the group inside is that these are just pawns of Iran and they're it's a puppetry of Iran. They're they're funding these. They're probably peppering people in or at least have people in this in this country that are uh, very like-minded with them and I think they're the ones that are stirring this up because you know how that looks on the international stage and uh, that all they want to do is undermine our country uh, and obviously destroy Israel at the same time but if they can if they can take us down a notch that's a victory for them yes yeah. Senator Barrett um, Senator always good to talk to you yeah um, obviously in the past several days, um, Joe Biden has indicated in his speech that, that he will not uh, be the nominee for the Democratic Party. And I think this speech will, will rank up there with Nixon's resignation, as well as LBJ's speech about not seeking um, his party's nomination. You have spent a lot of time with Joe Biden, served with him in the Senate. Um, you know, there's a lot of speculation about his cognitive ability. Um, the, obviously, the, the extremely poor debate performance uh, you've known him a long time. What, what can you say about his, his abilities at this point? Well, I mean, I actually saw him uh, you know, up close and personal about three weeks ago when he signed a bill that I had put forward on, on nuclear energy. And, um, you know, in that, in that moment, he seemed elderly but fine, if you, if you know what the difference is. You know, he, he was conducting um, business. But then he starts to drift off into these kind of conversations 
and you could see the staff quickly uh, assembling everybody to leave and all those kinds of things. Not in an emergency way, but you know, okay, that this is over. It's time to go home. And but what troubles me is, I. I mean, I, I, I hate to keep talking about my parents in their later years, but if you've seen this, if you've seen the onset of um, older age and dementia or whatever, you know what it looks like, and this is what it looks like. It looks like uh, sort of the the hesitation, the uh, loss of confidence, the loss of coming up with words, the, the uh, hesitant speech, the lowered voice, the lowered gait. And, I mean, I don't think that they're being honest with us. And that troubles me too. And I think he's made the right decision for himself and his family. But you know, he was pushed out. He he didn't exactly say, uh, I, "I think I'll withdraw myself." I, I, I think the handwriting was on the wall very clearly for him, and uh, he had no other decision to make. But I find it sad to me because it it, it hurts. It it hurts because. We know what it looks like, and we know how difficult it can be as it progresses. And I, I just see him in that stage. I'm not a doctor, but I, I am an observer of, of people and have lived through this, and this is what it looks like. Yeah. Senator, excuse me, I'm sorry, Jason, go ahead. Senator, I, I would agree, and, and uh, you know, I think that his family really has some responsibility for you know, really allowing him to run in the first place and not having those tough conversations before it got to this point. Um, there are a lot of Republicans, a lot of conservatives calling for um, Joe Biden's resignation. Uh, but there are a lot of conservative women, and I live with one of them, as you know, uh, who don't want to see the first female president um, be a liberal progressive, uh, a first female president be a liberal progressive like Kamala Harris. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And what is your take on whether or not President Biden should resign? Well, I have actually publicly said that I think he should resign simply because if he can't go forward in a campaign, and that's his definition of why he's pulling out, uh, well, his definition is he's, he's doing it for the country. But we all know what happened. He got pushed out, and we know what the precipitating events were. And we don't really know what was happening before that because there's no transparency. I'm talking about with his senior aides and his family in terms of whether he's been compromised. Uh, and so I, you know, I, I'm concerned. We're living in a dangerous time. I mean, we've got uh, the Israeli Gaza thing going on. We've got Ukraine, Russia. We've got uh, big economic issues here in the country. We've got crime. We've got all this anti-Semitism going around. The, these are, you got to be sharp and on your toes. And and so I, I think he should take him out himself out for the next six months. I mean, there's a that's a controversial position. Some people don't agree with that. Uh, in terms of the, the vice president, she cannot unhinge herself from President Biden. I mean, these are Biden-Harris policies. And when she was in the Senate, she was the most liberal senator there. If you look at her positions that are well-documented, she's anti-fracking, uh, anti-natural gas, anti um, she's even anti-red meat, which I did not realize until I saw something. She, uh, you know, doesn't believe that, uh, you know, arresting people for certain crimes is the right thing to do. So she's sort of soft on crime. She, she's very waffly on international affairs, much like the president is. So she is Senator or President Biden and his policies, but you can see them trying to decouple her from that, and I don't think that's going to work. How would you assess her response to the, uh, uh, at least her press conference yesterday following the meeting with the prime minister when the question about the protest was raised? Well, I think she is smart enough to know that that is deeply offensive to just about every American across the board. And so I think she came down hard on that, and I think that was the right decision. I mean, that's what her statement said. I didn't actually hear exactly what she said in, in her verbal statement, but she she said, you know, disrespectful, anti-American, and uh, deeply offensive to everybody. So I think that's the right line there. Um, I don't even think she tried to waffle on. But she did get on to, oh, we 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 can't have anti-Semitism, and you know, we can't be anti be Islamophobia. They always have to tie the two of those together. But you know, what we're talking about today is is really a a, a genocide uh, genocidal um, path. That Hamas wants to take towards uh, Jewish, the Jewish state, and Jews and Jews themselves. And I thought we'd never see this again after what the Holocaust did. So uh, 
I think she tries to walk a little bit of a line, but on the protest, it sounds like she came down pretty hard. You've been outspoken about how some of the Inflation Reduction Act money has been appropriated and then spent in ways that seem to be detrimental to American interests, Senator Capito. Yes, the Inflation Reduction Act has all kinds of money and no accountability to it. And there's a fund that the EPA is tasked with um, granting out to communities $600 million. And so far, $200 million of that, we've discovered, are going to anti-American, anti-police, uh, anti-Semitic groups. And you don't have to dig deep here. You can just go onto their, onto their websites and see what their ph philosophical positions are. So I don't know what this has to do with environmental justice. The latest one is a group called uh, NDN, and they uh, do not recognize America as uh, a, a state, uh, I mean, as a uh, United States. They call it so-called country. Uh, and, and they're going to have oversight over $100 million of taxpayers' dollars in the name of environment uh, and green. And, and I think that uh, we shouldn't be giving grants to uh, organizations such as this. And I, I find it outrageous myself. So instead of it calling it the Inflation Reduction Act, I call it the Investment in Radical Activities Act because they're investing in all of these um, – in a lot of these groups that are protesting all across the country in the name of environmental justice. I, 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 it's outrageous to me, and, and so we're going to keep digging, and we're going to find more and more, I'm sure. Senator Capito, thank you very much for your time this morning. Much appreciated. Listen, you guys have a good – Good day, and uh, take care of Jason there. Come on, he's only 42. <laughs> he's just a baby. Just a pop. Just a baby. Thank you, Senator. All right. Bye-bye.